I want everybody here to close their eyes and ask themselves a question. What is something that would be generally seen as a good thing in the Mega Series? A sawed-off shotgun, right? Here. Here isn't a sawed-off shotgun, but you can pretend it is anyways. I probably paid too much for this. And and this is the double breach. I clearly got it for $3 at Cashies because somebody didn't enjoy it very much. And now I have it. Have I enjoyed it? I don't know, let's find out. So the Nerf Mega Double Breach. What a blaster. Nobody likes it and nobody remembers it. <laughs> Seriously, this is a blaster that people talked about for about five minutes and that was the extent of the conversation about the Double Breach pretty much for its entire runtime until they eventually discontinued it. And you're looking at this like from a far glance, you're saying, well, why is that? I mean, look at it. It looks so cool. It's a double barrel sawed off shotgun with the breech load. You open it, you load in your two darts and then you, you shoot the two darts. Uh, here's the problem. It only shoots one dart at a time. Had to find a way to screw it up, didn't they? And as soon as this came out, people were vindicated. <laughs> Cause it looked so cool and people were so excited about this because it was actually going to introduce something new. But no, it's it's just, it, it's basically the Elite 2.0 Technician, except you got it by itself and it costed $25 and it shoots Mega Darts. So yeah, if you love the technician, you're probably going to love this just as much. Oh god, this review is gonna go badly, isn't it? Well, I don't know, let's start off with the ergonomics. This grip is so stupid. It's stupid, stupid grip. Let me explain why it's so stupid. You have this kind of finger choil thing, but it comes in the halfway point between where your your ring finger is going to be and where your pinky finger is going to be. So your ring finger ends up going right on the top of this lump thing, and it is so uncomfortable. If you move your ring finger up, then it's comfortable, or down, it is comfortable, but generally where it's going to be is not comfortable. How did they do that? How did they screw it up? It makes no sense. No and the rest of the grip, I mean, the back of it, it's very smooth, it's very filleted. The whole, like, choil thing down here feels very cool to put your fingers on. It's just that one part, it just ruins the grip for me. And I can imagine it ruined the grip for a lot of other people as well. <sighs> Come on, with something like this, the only thing they have to get right is the ergonomics, and they screwed it up! The trigger is very smooth and clicky, and it has that tiny little hole right there. I don't know what that's for. I, I wish I knew what that was for, but I don't. It's just there to exist. So, uh, yeah. And the foregrip is great. It's one of the best foregrips I've seen on something like this. Just a shame it wasn't on something more practical. The reason why this foregrip is so good is because it's so round. It doesn't just like fit on the bottom of the blaster. It cups around so your whole hand has something to grab onto. My thumb rides perfectly up here and my fingers just barely get up to there. So you have a nice comfortable place to put your hand, which is very rare, especially for pump shotguns like this. Most of the time the foregrip is just like, it stops where these finger choils stop. And so it's just like your hand has to squeeze on there and it's painful. Not this one. They wanted you to enjoy this. And for the one guy asking, it's got slam fire. Uh, it shoots two darts and it's got slam fire. The plastic quality, and also I might as well just go over this. The prime, very buttery smooth, wonderful prime. But the plastic quality is not really up to the Nerf standard. It creaks a lot, as you heard just now. The whole midsection of the blaster is very hollow. You can squeeze the plastic down if you try even just a little bit, especially right here. You can visibly see it creaking. I don't know why the quality drop came to this blaster, but uh, it did. It's also super thin. I think that's hilarious because Mega Blasters are always really big, but not this one. This one's thin. And that's funny. So how does this blaster work? Why was everybody so excited about it? Well, allow me to demonstrate. You prime it, you pull this down. Once it's primed, you open that thing in. You load two mega darts in by shoving them into those barrels. When you pull this closed, that door closes with them and locks. And you do this, and you fire one of those two darts. And then you prime again or slam fire off the other shot. So, um, 
really weird that this only fires one dart because they clearly have the real estate space to have like a, a, a rough cut style double plunger system in there to fire both at once, but they didn't. I, I don't know why. I really don't know why. And uh, considering that's all it's doing, it does its job really effectively. This blaster has pretty good performance. And it also has a dart storage on the top. It knows it's impractical and it doesn't care. It tries its hardest. The first two shots are going to be single shot. The second two are going to be with slam fire. And for the last two, I'm going to try and load it and fire it as fast as possible to show the general scope of how fast you're gonna be able to use this blaster. The first single shot. So yeah, you can actually get pretty fast with it if you practice a little. So, the Mega Double Breach. A blaster that really has no reason to exist at all, but still does for some reason, and I happen to find one at the thrift store. What do I think of this thing? I... It is really hard to justify a purchase of this blaster because it only appeals to about 5% of the Nerf community. It appeals to the one guy who wants a cosplay shotgun that still looks really cool, that just happens to fire Nerf darts for the fun of it. For the rest of the community, this thing is useless. It's not gonna do anything new. It, it's comfortable, it performs well, but it only shoots two darts. So it's not too much fun to use as a toy unless you're really into that breech loading mechanism and it's not useful as a practical blaster because it only has a capacity of two at a time. Even though you can get pretty fast with it, you shouldn't have to be really fast at reloads to be good at nerf. Well actually you kind of do with magazines and stuff, but you get the point. I personally think the double breech is pretty confident for what it's trying to do, it's just not trying to do something that very many people will appreciate. So if you do like what this blaster is doing, you're definitely going to enjoy it when you get it because it's good at its job. But if you're expecting a Nerf sawed off shotgun that shoots mega darts, you're going to be disappointed in this and you might as well just not waste your time. So if you would like to pick up a mega double breach, I will link one in the description below. With all that said, subscribe to this channel if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below what blaster would you like me to review next or what is your opinion on the mega double breach. I will see y'all next time. Coming next week, don't worry guys.